name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we're here at the Sunday before Gustavru, the Sunday before the elevation of the Holy Cross, which we celebrate every year on September 14th. And so we're celebrating literally the Ipsosis, the lifting up of the cross, because if you remember the story, it's St. Makarios, who is the patriarch or the bishop of Jerusalem, that after they find the cross, lifts it up, they build a throne that we usually see on the icon, and he lifts it up in all four directions so that all of the huge crowds of people that can't be able to get to it can at least see it lifted up before them and venerate it. And uh, so there's a connection being made in the Gospel of John, which we just heard, the connection about Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness, connection made between that and between the cross of Christ being lifted up. And so that seems like a strange connection. What might the connection between those two things be? And so the original story is after the Hebrews are delivered and they're wandering in the wilderness, waiting for the promised land, they come a point where they start losing faith. And so God sends serpents, sends snakes, and the snakes bite them. And because of the poison, people start dying. And so they go and they cry out to Moses and they say, help us, the snakes are biting us and we're dying. Moses prays and God tells him to make a bronze serpent, like a statue, and to lift it up on a stick and let the people look at it. And he does that and the people are healed and they're no longer poisoned by the serpents. And so the connection of that to the cross of Christ being lifted up as we're about to celebrate in a few days might seem strange. How do those two events connect? And so we think about a lot of different ways of interpreting the lifting up of the snake. But one of the fundamental ways we interpret that is that the people have lost their faith in God. They've lost their trust in God. And so when suffering hits them, when illness hits them, when difficulties hit them, they are unable to face them. And so the reason that the snake is lifted up for the people to look at is that we have to gaze upon that which we are afraid of. And when we confront that which we're afraid of and we look at it and it's lifted up in front of us, we confront our fear and we're no longer afraid of it. And so the cross of Christ is a per perfect symbol of that because the way of a Christian is the way of following Christ and that way is one of suffering. It's not one of just happy times and joy. Christ is resurrected. In order to be resurrected, he first has to die on the cross. The cross is a symbol of Christ's victory over death, but it's also the symbol of him loving us so much that he's willing to suffer and die for us. And so for us in our spiritual life, there are a lot of things happening that we get anxious about, that we are troubled about, that we're fearful of, and what God is telling us is that we don't close our eyes to those things. We don't turn our way and run from those things. We don't remain silent when dealing with those things. We open our eyes and we gaze upon that which terrifies us. We confront the suffering. We look at it. We talk about it. And we do that in whatever way we're able to. And in that way, we're able to follow Christ and to pick up our own cross and to be able to go after him. And that's what is such a struggle for us, the struggle of the Christian life. And so I meet people all the time, every day, each and every one of us, and we're all struggling with things. We're all carrying crosses. There is not one person on earth that is not carrying a cross. Even someone that you look at their life from the outside and say, wow, I wish I could be like them. Don't wish for that. Because I guarantee you that person is carrying a bigger cross than you can understand or realize. Everyone is suffering. Everyone is dealing with something in their life. People have emotional problems. People have difficult relationships. People have financial troubles. People have addictions. Everyone is suffering in some way, shape, or form. And the way of the cross is the way of confronting that suffering. Taking up our cross means we don't run from it. We don't ask God to take it away from us. 
And we make that mistake far too often. As soon as anything goes wrong, what's the first thing we do? We run to God and we say, Lord, take this away. Lord, make it better. Rather than saying, Lord, give me the strength to carry this. Thank you for the blessing of this. Why? Because it's a reminder that we need him. It's a reminder that we don't do everything on our own. People might look and say, well, why would God send snakes to bite people and kill them? That seems pretty bad. But realizing, of course, this is before the incarnation. This is before the birth of Christ when the people had to be rebuked and chastised because of their lack of faith, so that they didn't turn away from God altogether. It's a metaphor for the fact that God gives us trials, tests, tribulations, not because He wants to hurt us. He loves us. He is love. But He wants to give us opportunities to draw closer to Him. He wants to give us opportunities to confront that which terrifies us, to show our bravery. And whenever I think of the cross, I always think of St. Anthony the Great because there's that great story, and I'll finish with this, where St. Anthony is praying in the tombs. He's out by himself, closed in the tombs, and he's praying, and he's reached such a high level spiritually that the demons don't attack him mentally in temptation. They physically assault him. They physically appear and they beat him. And there's records of saints, saints like St. Anthony, fighting with demons, so much so that the clash of armor is heard for great distances. So the demons assault him in the tomb, and they beat him within an inch of his life. People come from the area in the villages around and find him and bring him into the villages, and they bind his wounds, and they heal him. And he wakes up somewhat healed, but not really well, and the first thing he says is, take me back. I've got to go back to the tomb. And says, so uh, you almost died. He goes, I must go back. I must go back to the tomb. He goes back. He's back by himself once again. The demons appear and beat him. And he's praying out to Christ after the beating as he's laying on the ground. And he says, oh Lord, why? And Christ's voice comes. And he hears the voice of Christ. And he said, oh Anthony, so that I might see your courage so that I might see your valor. And so that's something that we have to remember and think about when we think about the cross of Christ, that there is joy and love and compassion and mercy as part of what we believe in our faith, but there are tears that come along with it. There is suffering that comes along with it, and we have to confront the demons. We have to confront the snakes. We have to be willing to gaze upon that which scares us and say, if Christ is with me, who can stand against me? And what should I be afraid of if I have the love and the compassion of Christ with me? And that's really the celebration of the cross. And it's something that we think about and we celebrate this time of year, but really all throughout the year every day, all day, with whatever troubles and difficulties are besetting us and confronting us, always remember when we make the sign of cross to think about the Lord's suffering and to remember that we follow Him and that if we have faith and trust in Him and hope in Him, He will never disappoint us, but will give us His love and mercy and heal us of whatever bites and whatever poison might be besetting us, and he does that each and every day. Amen.